now we're going to talk about arpeggiating chords rather than strumming them. So an arpeggio is when you just pick individual notes of the chord. And I'm using House of the Rising Sun as an example because it has a very simple pattern. So an arpeggio is defined as single notes in a chord being picked out rather than letting the whole chord ring out at once. So we can practice that at first using some of the chords I've already taught you. And you'll just pluck each individual string rather than strumming the whole chord. So take the D chord, for example, and you'll just pluck each individual note that's in the chord, starting from the open D to the G to the B string to the E string and then going backwards again to the B string G string and D string go over the chords that are used in House of the Rising Sun, but it's all going to follow that basic pattern that's going up and down on the strings like that. Okay, so we got some new chords that we're going to look at for House of the Rising Sun, so I'll give them to you in the order in which they appear. So it starts with an A minor chord, and the A minor chord looks very similar to the E chord that we learned earlier, but everything is just going to be moved up a string. So you're going to have your middle finger at the 2nd fret of the D string. Your ring finger at the 2nd fret of the G string. And your index finger at the 1st fret of the B string. Then the next card we go to will be the C chord, which is very similar to the A minor chord but you move one finger to a different string. So just take your whole A minor chord here, lift your ring finger, and instead put it at the third fret of the A string. All other fingers stay at the same position. So you'll have your ring finger at the third fret of the A string, middle finger at the second fret of the D string, and index finger at the first fret of the B string. And while learning this progression, you just go ahead and do the single downstroke strums so that you have the progression in mind before you start throwing in the arpeggios. So the first two chords we have in the progression are A minor and C. The chord that follows is the D chord, which we've already gone over, but it looks like this. And then the next chord that follows is going to be a tricky one. It's the F chord. And this one's a little bit difficult when you're first learning it, because it requires your index finger to cover two strings at the same time. So it'll be with the ring finger at the third fret of the D string the middle finger at the 2nd fret of the G string, and then the index finger will cover both the B and the E string at the 1st fret. And when first learning the F chord, it's best to just try with the index finger covering those two strings, and just try to get that down before you do the other fingering as well. And you'll just take the flat end of your index finger rather than the tip, and you'll cover both strings and press down firmly. And then pluck each string to make sure that they both ring out. And this is a very difficult chord to learn when you're first starting out on guitar, so don't get frustrated if you don't get it right the first time around. Okay, and then after the F chord, we'll return to A minor, back to C, and then to E. And we'll go over the E chord one more time for you. You'll have the middle finger at the 2nd fret of the A string, 
the ring finger at the second fret of the D string, and the index finger at the first fret of the G string. So it's the same shape as the A minor chord, but everything moved down a string. Okay, so that's all the chords that are in the song, and I'll give you the progression for it right now. And as I said, just try practicing with just downstrokes before we move into the arpeggio, just so you have the chord progression down. So it'll go A minor, C, D, F, A minor, C, E, and you hit E again. Now the progression starts over exactly the same, and it just ends differently. So we'll go A minor, C, D, F, and then it ends with A minor, E, A minor, and E. Okay, and just practice the chord changes and try to get everything down as fluidly as possible, and then we'll talk about the arpeggio. Okay, so to play the arpeggios, you're just going to hit the bass note, which is going to be the lowest note in the chord, and that's going to change depending on which chord you're hitting. But in the A chord, it's just going to be this open A. And then once you've hit the bass note, you'll hit the three top strings in ascending order, G, B, E. And then come back up with B and G. So it'll sound like. So just practice that pattern. And then when you start moving through the chords, you may need to keep in mind that the bass note will change strings. So on the A chord and the C chord, the bass note will be on the A string. But on the D chord and the F chord, it's going to be on the D string. And then when you hit the E chord, it's just going to be this big open E note. Okay, so I'll play the full progression for you so you can see what my right hand is doing, and keep careful note on which strings I'm plucking. So we zoomed out so you can take a look at what both my hands are doing. And I'll play it for you one more time, and I'll give you the chords in order so that you have that committed to memory. So it goes A, C, D, F, A, C, E. Okay, and that'll be the whole song, and that just repeats throughout.